Calabar physics teacher Sanjay Shaw has now filed a police report on the alleged assault by two top athletes. However, Shaw says he will not press charges. At a press conference on Friday, attorney at law David Fitzhenley said it was a sad day for Calabar. The story you will hear and the four videotape that you will see from Mr. Sanjay Shaw are heartbreaking stories of what Calabar has become, how low our standards have fallen, how we have covered up alleged criminal acts, how we mistreat our teachers who sacrifice themselves every day, who put out their utmost to produce the highest standards of personal behavior and academic excellence in the students they serve. And Mr. Shaw said the incident unfolded on December 15, 2018, after he approached a track coach to ask for some cuts from the track camp for his physics students who were also attending an overnight camp ahead of their exams. He turned to me and said, these beds were not sponsored to Calabar, they were sponsored to the track team. So I turned to him and I said, um, but I never had any idea that Calabar and the track team are two different entities. I thought that Calabar was the, at the top and tracks was just a part of the system of Calabar, just as everything else. His reply was, where did they get this dumb ass teacher? And pardon me for saying that. Where did they get this teacher from? You're stupid. And I turned to him and I said, Sir, we're just asking for some beds to help the students because we still have parents in the room that's wondering where, where will their students or their, their wards be sleeping, you know? And his reply is, I, I, that's not my problem. Only a ass would plan a camp without beds. So I turned to him and I said, sir, only an ass wouldn't see the implications that this will have on the image of the school. If the parents were, to, were to, um, supposed to stay in that room and see, see for the night that their child will be left to sleep on the floor or on top of the desk, uh, on top of the tables or on top of the chairs that they put together to make a makeshift bed. It's, it's not going to look good, you know, sir, so, so I'm appealing because the image is everything. So I'm appealing to you to just help us out. And he said, no, we don't have any beds. Can't help you. And we heard that you have some beds down there, so we we'll come and check for them. And he called two other coaches and told them to go and check if there was any other beds down at the physics lab that belongs to the track team. Um, we had 63 students at the camp at that time. Um, we only had 10 sponges. So we were short of 53. He said the coaches removed four of the six cots and left. According to Mr. Shaw, soon after while he was with his physics students in the lab, a group of athletes descended. I heard some banging on the windows. I saw a couple of the windows hit out and I could hear a barrage of students outside, roughly about 60. They came into the, they tried to enter the room, but I ran to the door trying to close it because they were, they were behaving aggressive. So I had to go to the door and try and close it. They kicked it down, some push, some kick, fly the door open. They came in and before they started, from the windows got hit out, I start recording the thing because I'm saying, you know, this is getting you know, dangerous. So I'm going to start recording. So I just started recording from the hit out the windows. And so when the first few came to the door, I was still recording. Um, the crowd came down. Um, they pushed in, came into the lab. And while I was recording, when they came into the lab, one of the athletes in question, who at this point, uh, one of the athletes, which is Dejo Russell, slapped my hand and said, take the phone out from my friend. Slapped my hand. The phone fell. And while I was reaching for it, he stepped over and stepped on the phone. A piece of the glass from the phone 
inside my my my, my in the in in my um, forearm and also on my elbow. Sorry, right, my palm and my elbow. So I got cut two places. I pick up the phone; it wasn't working. The students then proceed. Um, Christopher Taylor then proceed to drape me up. Let me know that the Straxman run this school, and I just stood, and I allowed him to do everything that he's going to do. I allowed him because if I touched him at that point, then I would be giving up my own rights. So I just allowed him to do everything that they wanted to do, and I just never retaliated I, I i just left them to whatever they had to do the only thing i could say was turn around to the physics students who were quite traumatized at this point all 63 of them was shaking because they saw what was happening to a teacher right in front of their eyes and i could just turn back look at them and i said guys sit where you are don't say anything. Don't move from where you are. Just remain where you are because it's not going to be said that a fight occurred here today. So we'll deal with this professionally after. Mr. Shaw said he reported the matter to the police the same night and they turned up. But the school administration did nothing. On the 22nd, I, I met with the principal. And I, I ask him, you know, Mr. Rowe, why haven't any disciplinary actions taken place so far? Because you need no further documentation for that, because we came to simple solution. Simple solution. So I don't see why it is taking so much time for the latter to occur. And this is on the 22nd of February. And the incident occurred from the 15th of December. He looked at me and said, Mr. Shaw, look at this scenario. These boys are ambassadors of the school. And looking at where you're coming from to where you are now and how you're acting, I am sure that you are not proud of where you are. So I turned to him and I said, so therefore, sir, if I came from Cherry Gardens, or let's say Norbrook, would, 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 would you be able to say that to me? Because at this point, he's still belittling me. He's still treating me less than a human being. He's still in his mind, you know, believe that Mr. Shah is just a little, a little nasty. It's just the one side, and low the issue. So when I left on the 22nd, I left with the intention that I'm going to give them a little bit more time. A little bit more time. But all of the time when we get them, I got to get them more to see if they will take disciplinary actions against the students. Because every day I walk home in a school, man deep sleep, shut eyes, um, you got to get locked in a coffee box and your mother got to cry. Be a song they must sing when they pass. I'm steady with the matic. I be a gun man there, you know, you know, see, when you love man, brother, all different type of things them sing. And Jerry a man in time when they come. You know why? Because the school leave that gray area for them to act this way. They leave the gray area for them to act this way. So the students were acting this way because the school was indecisive. They never stand up and make them position clear. Eventually, Christopher Taylor and DeJore Russell were suspended from March 12 to March 19, but Taylor was still allowed to train and last week competed at the Digicel Grand Prix final. Shaw says that is not acceptable and is demanding a proper suspension. 
Meanwhile, school board chairman, the Reverend Dr. Carl Johnson, has reserved comments saying he first wants to see the video recordings of the incident. The controversy comes just days ahead of the Boys and Girls Championships. Calabar is fancied to win the boys section. Damian Mitchell for the Gleaner Online.